My interpretation of the comic characters, like, let's just run with using Kingpin as an example. When I was reading the Kingpin growing up with, you know, the John Romita version of it, uh, you know, this big bald-headed guy with, you know, with that, that huge jewel in the center of his cravat, you know, it was such a, an interesting, uh, you know, character. But then as I started to do the work with Daredevil and, and you know with Frank Miller on the on the um, the Love and War graphic, which what be, in what became the Love and War graphic novel. But at that time, I was really into getting into animation like Tex Avery and exaggeration, and um, the way that Frank writes characters. There are characters he writes characters that are bigger than you know bigger than life, larger than life. And certainly, I felt that that Wilson Fisk fit that bill. People say uh, all art aspires to music. I sort of feel like all art aspires to cartooning because it's the truth through the abstraction or truth through the lie of something. So for me, I sort of felt that the kingpin, well, he should be just a mass, he just should be a mountain, you know? And so the idea of, of exaggeration taken to, you know, dialed up, not even to Spinal Taps 11, you know, but like, you know, double that. Um, that to me was, was much more thrilling and exciting. It's like how far and how big, like it's just, it's just huge. Because he feels massive, he feels imposing. He, he isn't necessarily flesh and blood, he's this immovable object. And that's what I, that's the kind of thing that uh, you can do in comics. You know, that, uh, that sense of, of abstraction and, and it, comics should be fun, you know, th at the end of the day. They can do a lot of things, but, um, but they shouldn't be tortured. I was working on Electra, especially the first issue. What Frank had written was very, something very dark. And Frank will sort of run to the darkness in, in his work, and he really can kind of just embrace it. That my way of dealing with something that's been incredibly dark was to get really sort of darkly comedic about it. You know, my, it's sort of this black sense of humor. As a, it's kind of gives a more of a coping mechanism of some sort. So I realized that when I was reading the, um, the first script, I felt that it was so oppressive everything that was happening in it you know she's 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 locked in an asylum and she's being you know tortured and you know electroshocked and so i wanted to juxtapose that with some sort of ideas of what a, like a childlike interpretation of things or memories of, of of her life so uh i can't say it was it was actually something I sat down and thought of as list of A, B, C, D, this is, this is what I want to do. It became much more of a um, what felt right emotionally to do. So uh, a lot of the, the abstractions and the simplifications and sort of the, the, dark and, the darker, more gritty, gray images juxtaposed with her childlike memories or child, you know, child memories uh, sort of channeled through the, the way that I interpret it with the doilies and with uh, um, you know, the really pastel colors and even the misspellings. It's like, because that's what comics can do. They can, you know, the, the images can do many things. So there were times when Frank would write something very, very uh, evocative and the image might be very something very simple. So uh, there's a lot of counterpoint, counterpoint going on. It was, it was all experiment, you know, all experiment.